paper, the topos of Mu and the predicative uh, self is divided uh, into three sections. Um, the first section is called relational and monadic senses of self. Uh, the second is the natural microcosm and the moral, uh, the natural macrocosm and the moral uh, and social mi microcosm. And then the last section is titled uh, From Orality to Literacy to Googality. Um, so let me begin just summarizing the, each of these uh, sections. Um, the tapas of mu and the predicative self was a phrase that I heard on my first trip to uh, Japan in the 1980s. And I was completely mystified by what this uh, was all about. Uh, but in short, uh, it is a sort of Kyoto school uh, rendition of the Buddhist concept of anatta or no self, uh, and adding to that the idea that we are, that if to the extent that there is a self, it is defined in terms of its relationships, which is what uh, the, the concept of the predicate uh, seems to be all about. So uh, what is the, and, and this in contrast to the monadic sense of self, which I think is characteristic of our uh, Western uh, tradition. So uh, having sort of indicated in the, in the most general way what the relational sense of self is, the monadic uh, sense of self, I think is deeply embedded uh, in our uh, Western tradition going back to Pythagoras. Uh, it was uh, reiterated by Empedocles and uh, uh, doubled down on, you might say, by uh, Plato. So the idea here is that the soul is, the, is occupying uh, a foreign body and one's self is associated not so much with one's physical reality, but with the, the psychic uh, substance. So there is a sort of way of thinking of the self in terms of interiority. Uh, this of course was uh, adopted uh, by uh, Christianity and therefore popularized. It was re-secularized, we might say, by Descartes, and uh, has been uh, characteristic, I think, of our uh, sense of self in the West um, really ever since. So the, I think that this is also reinforced uh, in terms of uh, a relationship of the moral and social microcosm to the natural uh, macrocosm. One of the achievements of uh, Greek natural philosophy was atomism and really uh, almost simultaneously, uh, both in, in terms of time, of course, but also in terms of place, Protagoras and Leucippus happened to be and Democritus from the same city and Leucippus and uh, Protagoras were uh, contemporaries. So as Leucippus is developing the idea of uh, the, uh, this uh, uh, idea of atomism, so we, uh, there emerges a kind of atomism of the individual. And the very first um, concept of, uh, a, of, of an ethical theory and a political theory uh, in the ancient world was the social contract theory. Uh, 
So when atomism then is revived in the 17th century uh, by um, Gassendi and eventually adopted by Newton, simultaneously there is a sort of social atomism developed by uh, Thomas uh, Hobbes. So, uh, however, uh, as the natural, um, as, as natural philosophy develops in the form of science, we have a second scientific revolution and atomism is overcome. At the same time, ecology emerges. And so there is a greater sense of a, a self, the in other words, in, in the natural domain, a, a sense that there is a continuity and a system of relationships, both at the cosmic level and uh, the, um, in, in terms of the biological uh, world. So that if this relationship between the natural uh, macrocosm and moral microcosm uh, uh, continues, then uh, we might see in terms of the inherent uh, dynamic of Western civilization, a, 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 the possibility of moving towards a, um, a more relational sense of the self or an ecological sense of the self in which we understand ourselves in terms of the relationships to our socio-environmental uh, milieu. Um, now, the last section, and uh, from orality to literacy to Googality, uh, is based on the idea that um, in, in, in the scientific community, the, um, uh, the mechanical world was translated into uh, technology. And so this reinforces the, the sort of classical atomistic uh, idea. But with the new physics, we have uh, technology being uh, uh, adapted to, um, the, uh, to quantum physics and relativity uh, and, and so on. So, there's also a reinforcement then coming from the technical uh, side. However, uh, it seems that uh, the technology that uh, is forthcoming from this, the internet and so on, is, um, is perhaps not having the sorts of implications that uh, it might seem. So I began to speculate then on the possibility of an even more profound transformation. And this again, in reference to the classical world, uh, the, the, the oral uh, culture of uh, Greece um, was of course maintained simply through memory. And so the, um, uh, the culture was stored in these vast epics. And the epics, of course, were, it's hard to imagine people actually believing, say, the events as reality in the theogony. Uh, and uh, after that uh, period, shortly after in the sixth century and the fifth century, a completely different sort of consciousness seems to uh, have emerged uh, that's more rational, uh, that's expressed in prose, and so on. And so the argument by Walter Ong and uh, others, uh, Marshall McLuhan, um, uh, Eric uh, Havelock, is that with this transition from uh, orality to literacy, 
there was a sort of reworking of uh, human uh, consciousness, making possible the idea of an abstract thought, uh, the interiority of the subject, and so on. So I'm thinking that we are in the midst of a similar re revolution in communications technology, and I'm calling this Googality, that uh, we are, if those of us, most of us in the academic world are be beginning to realize that our students who grew up uh, using the internet and iPhones and so on, uh, don't really understand reading books and long articles and, and, and so on. All of their information comes uh, through the internet term papers I get are cited with exclusively URLs. And this seems to me to be uh, creating a different sort of re, um, reorganization of human uh, consciousness, which I'm calling Googality. And at this point, I think the, the, the jury is out as to uh, what it, it might become. Uh, at, at this point, it seems to be actually intensifying our sense of interiority, individuality, instead of creating connections and universality, it seems to be locating us in bubbles and intensifying our uh, own privacy. So we're at a point, I think, of transition uh, where human consciousness is concerned. And frankly, uh, at this point, it's impossible to say uh, what the outcome is going to be. So that's a rough summary of the points I try to make in the uh, paper that I'm submitting to the conference.